Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you the entire process of the making of bourbon soap. Now bourbon soap is a man's soap. This is how it looks like once it's finished and packaged. It's quite popular. I guess people love bourbon for that matter. Go on down and get me some bourbon. You slip me a bottle of bourbon, a little glass and some ice. I'm going to do a double batch, meaning a double batch of this um, brambleberry five pound mold with a silicone liner that I absolutely love. If you are somebody who likes to see the entire process from the very beginning to the end, then this video is for you. If you prefer a video that is more dynamic, like a speeded version, just to watch and relax, then please let me know in the comments down below. I can make that as well, no problem at all. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and you can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook, Sarah's Soap. So without any further ado, let's get into it. This is how the hard oils look like before they get melted. So this is coconut oil, the lighter one, and uh, palm oil is the more yellowy one. All right, we're gonna suit up for safety. We have this uh, nice container I got from Amazon. I will uh, link it down in the description box. This here, in this bucket, we have the the hard oils that were just melted and they are now at 66 celsius let me see if i can see what it means fahrenheit it's 160 you can switch from celsius to fahrenheit that's pretty good so we're gonna start by the, these oils were measured out beforehand so i know exactly that it is the amount that we're gonna need for our soap today Now to these oils, we need to add the soft oils. I'm gonna use a scale. Oops. This olive oil. Next one is sweet almond oil. Not really see. I'm gonna move just a little bit here. And castor oil. And you will find the description, the recipe. I'm sorry. You will find the recipe down in the description box. It's um, very easy and um, a solid and stable recipe. So that's it for the oils. That's the entire oil amount we need for today. And we're gonna weigh out the fragrance oil. 
so I can move my scale out of the way. For this amount I need 200 milliliters and I could just basically use the measuring cup because it says 200 mils. So we can see if this corresponds. Yeah. So fragrance oil is ready. I'm gonna move the scale out of the way. Now, one very important thing when you're soaping is that this is the lye water solution and the lye and the oils need to be at about the same temperature. So we can see that the oils are still a little bit too warm, but that's okay. We're gonna move things out of the way because we're gonna prepare our colorant which is for this soap, a gold. It's called um, the Bloom Gold Mica. It's from You Make It Up. It's a company in Spain that has very high quality colorants. So that's one we're gonna be using. And from the same company, Chestnut Brown Mica. And then, we're gonna use titanium dioxide for the white part and I like to use water-based. I think I, I have a better control. So I'm gonna use distilled water. And it's always better to have a little bit more than being short of. And you can see it dissolves rather quickly. So the colorant is ready to go as well. I like to keep such a roll always handy so you can easily remove spills or dirt, whatever you have going on. Okay, so I'm gonna get the molds. These are the Brambleberry 5 pound mold. It's 2.5 kilos and it comes with a silicone liner, which is totally practical because um, it you can unmold the soap easily out of these molds once they are cured. And they have, let me show you a little bit better, they have like this removable, slidable bottom so you can can just remove it and then the soap falls down and then you can just you get the idea right so let me get this back and ready to go need two more containers to divide the, the colors because I'm gonna make be making different colors so they are ready to go as well. It's important to have everything at hand so you can move fast with the, the soap that is uh, behaving always a bit different. One other thing before I forget I always use sodium lactate 
and I put it in my live water just before soaping, then it makes the soap hard. It helps with curing time and most of all, um, it helps you on molding the soap so that it doesn't crumble or it's not too squishy. So that's a very good thing to do and personally, I don't soap without it. So for this amount of soap, I'm gonna put, be putting three tablespoons. So we can move this one out of the way. All right. So when you, whenever you're working with lye, make sure that you wear gloves, glasses, as you can see here, because you don't want the lye to splash in your eyes. That would be like not good at all. So now let's see how we're doing. So that's not so bad. We are at 44 degrees for the oils and 39 for the lye water. So I think we're just gonna roll with it. So we have fragrance oil ready, the colorants are ready, and the containers are ready to go. All right, so. Prepare the stick, stick blender at hand. Now you always want to put your lye water into your oils and never the other way around. Never the oils into the lye water, but always the lye water into the oils. That's very, very important. So here we go. I will put the stick blender in. mixing it to a point where you can see the batter is getting lighter. It means we reached a, um, an emulsion. We're almost there. We want to have everything completely, you can see it if oil is still floating around, you're not there yet. And if the batter is bigger, then uh, you just need a little bit more time. Now you can see it's uniform. I'm gonna give it one more whiz. Can you see when I'm steering it that you have little trails going on? You see, it's a very light emulsion, and we are okay because we're gonna we're gonna use the stick blender for colorant as well. So we don't want it to get too thick for this type of soap. So now I'm 
I'm separating off the colors. We have one main color, which is white. We're gonna keep it in the bucket. And then we have two accent colors for the swirl inside the soap, which is gonna be the light gold or the light brown and the dark one. So here we go. So we start with the put that big one out of the way. All right, so so we have the gold. Titanium dioxide goes into the big bucket. And then what we're gonna do is we start mixing it up with the lightest color first. sides of our molds. Looks pretty good. We don't want to have like a completely white um, batter. It needs to be like a custard kind of or a, I don't know, egg nook. Same with the other two colors. Now we need to move fairly quick. As you can see, the batter is moving. So we get out molds. I almost forgot the fragrance oil. Never happened to me before. Why should it happen now? standing there you won't forget that you need to put them in so this smells amazing It. 
half of the more than and then we're gonna start working with the accent colors you can see the the, the battery is at medium trace so that's very good i'm gonna put it like this and then there's no technique or right or wrong you can do you just go as you as you like You want to keep just a little bit for the top for decoration. So we're going to pour a little bit on top of this just to make the swirl a little bit more defined. Breaking through the, the other layers of colors. And we're going to keep just a little bit for the top. So now at this point I like to take a spoon or you could take a chopstick and we're gonna do a swirl inside. It's a chopstick swirl so it's basically easy you just go in like this. Can you see? No you can't. Let's do it this way. Like so. So you swirl the colors inside a little bit more than just a drop swirl. Same thing over here. I'm gonna do it this way. All right. Now we're gonna work with the top. out from from the bucket I hope you all can see what I'm doing And again here, there's no right or wrong, you just go how you think it looks good and how you feel and, you know, if you want to try some new things, hey, why not, you know. At the end of the day it's soap and you're going to use it anyway, so. But of course it's better to use a pretty soap than an ugly one, I agree with that one. start with the, uh, the dark brown first because the last color you put on top of it is going to be the more dominant one. So you want to make sure that you really fill in all the cracks.
it smells so amazing. So we're good for this one. Gonna clean the sides a little bit. Oh, and then one one tip, like the containers, as you can see here. If you want to try now to go and clean them, you need to be you need to be very very patient and it takes a lot of time and elbow grease and everything. So what I like to do, I like to keep them like this overnight. By tomorrow it's soak. You put them into the sink. You uh, put some hot water over it and you can easily clean them. So don't bother yourself cleaning the containers right now. All right, so now we're gonna um, decorate the top. I'm gonna swirl the top and I'm gonna put the camera on another angle so you can see me better. Huh? I like to take just a regular chopstick and then you can do as you like. I like to do the figure eight. That's it. Looks pretty cool. Last thing you want to do is grab your rubbing alcohol and spray the top. This prevents soda ash, which is a phenomenon that is happening during saponification. You will, it, you will have like a gray, it can happen that you have a gray um, surface. And this is nothing bad, it's just an, an aesthetic point you can prevent by rubbing alcohol so I'm gonna leave it like this overnight I'm gonna spray it a little bit more with rubbing alcohol in about half an hour and then we're gonna be back tomorrow for unmolding you have a close view of the top what do you think do you like this technique it has also a texture on it which I think it's really pretty Can you see the texture? All right. So let's see you in a moment. All right, so we are almost 24 hours later and this is how the soap looks like after one day of curing. There is um, no soda ash on top of it, which is good. So I'm gonna show you the unmolding. <clears throat> like you pull the slide bottom and sorry if the camera will um what can I say shake now voila 
There we go. So what I like to do is first checking if the sides are unmolding easily or if it's still sticking. That looks okay. I'm gonna just um, make some air come in. This one is a slight different mold. It doesn't have the hole to slide the bottom out, which makes it a little bit more complicated, but nothing that we can't manage, hopefully. <laughs> Probably there is some soap still sticking to the sides, making it more difficult. Yesterday I told you about leaving your containers um, over 24 hours and then it will saponify. This is what's happening now. So that's soap and you can just give it a soak in your sink. I leave it for a couple of hours so it can dissolve a little bit. It makes my cleanup a little bit easier. That's what I'm gonna do now. I just realized I wasn't filming it. Um, this is the cut of the soap. And of course, you're gonna have always different kind of designs depending on the um, trays you have, how you pour it, how high you pour it in, what kind of colors, what kind of chopstick you're using. Of course, if you have a thick one, it will make a different design than if you're using a thin chopstick. And every bar is unique. And the end piece. Okay, we're gonna give it just a little. So this is the soap cutter. is manufactured. Um, it's manufactured in Germany for specific uh, for cutting soap, just for this specific use. And you have guitar strings here, and you make, need to make sure that they are, uh, how can I say, they are tight. I mean, you don't need to tune it, of course. You could, of course, um, if you have like a 12 string guitar. Okay, just joking. So then you place your soap on the plastic form here, and then you press down firmly but gently in one movement. And when you hear this, you know you're through. Everything has been cut. And here is the finished bar. And it smells amazing. It's quite firm already. This recipe is like always um, ready to unmold within 24 hours except if you're using like a very slow moving fragrance so like typically love spell i would you know wait a little longer but you will see you will see once you once you touch the soap how the consistency is to me it should be like a like a cheese like a maybe like a Dutch cheese. If you 
you know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about this French brie type of cheese. That would be too soft. So let's go for the second bar. And we do the same, oops, we do the same procedure. One firm movement all the way down to the soap, through the soap. And I think cutting is always very exciting because you get to see the design that is inside. It's never the same. It's always different. You can see this yellow, more yellow spots here on the side. That's a fragrance oil. It will adjust with the curing time. It will get a little lighter. But I think the color is uh, perfect for this uh, fragrance. The second part of the second loaf is going in. By the way, did you know that soap is the best weapon we have these days against any type of viruses and bacteria? I have a, a video about this uh, specific topic that I will um, link in the description box. You can find it. How soap works against coronavirus. And it has to do with the molecules of the soap. Very, very interesting. All right, so that's it for the coffee. I'm gonna move you to this side here. Hope you can see. I'm gonna try to put you a little bit more down. This is helping. Okay, so. Now comes the stamping part. And the stamping part is actually very easy once you understand uh, what you, you're supposed to do. So these are soap stamps. You can use anything, a logo or anything really. I'm using my logo. This is how the stamp looks. And it has this um, impression, not impression, it's the, the opposite of an impression, it's a texture, I don't know how to call it. And then you want to take a rubber mallet, not a hammer, but a rubber mallet. This is important because you don't want to break the soap. Or the stamp for that matter. So you put the soap on a surface and then you put the stamp where you want to have it. I like to have it on the um, bottom left, no right, I never know what is right and left anyways. Here is where I want to have it. So I give it a, just a light tap in the middle, then one on the side. that the stamp was sinking in the soap. And this is the result. You don't need to be too um, hard or too light. You really, it takes a little practice to, to get to exactly the um, depth you wanna, you wanna have. Otherwise, if it's if you're too deep, then if you 
putting out, pulling out the stamp, the soap can stick and then it doesn't look good. It tears a little bit the soap apart. But what you can do if you have such end pieces like I do, you can start with the end piece and just have a look first how it looks and if you're happy with it. Sometimes it might be that you wanna leave the soap a little longer. I typically stamp immediately after cutting. I find this is the best that works for me. I know some people are waiting up to one week, depending on the recipe. Like if you have a very soft recipe, you might wanna wait. And then me for sure, I'm gonna wait three weeks or more before to smoothen these edges um, before packaging. And this I'm gonna do with the same, with this little tool. Some people, I know some soap makers, they use potato peelers or they use some, um, some other kind of tools like a shaver or um, this other tool that I don't remember what it's called that does this uh, diagonal um, cuts. And then, of course, if someone um, orders like, a soap for a person or for a brand or something, then you can um, have the soap stamper, st stamp maker, soap stamp maker, sorry, make um, a custom made stamp. I have mine in Germany, it's a very professional person, and very easy to work with. I'm gonna leave the link for his um, shop down in the description box as well. And you can see this is a very fast process. It doesn't take too long to get them stamped once you know how to go about it. I'm gonna finish this one on uh, fast forward so you don't get too bored. By the way, these end pieces I'm using them as samples because you cannot sell it for the obviously for the same price as for a regular bar of soap. But one very funny episode I remember now when I'm stamping the soap is um, when I first rented this place where I'm now. Uh, I remember that the landlord told me, yeah, I mean, the activity you are doing is a very quiet one, I guess. I believe you are not hammering on soap. <laughs> and I was, I was laughing inside. Laughing to myself and thinking, actually, I am. <laughs> Me, myself, I like when um, other soap makers make a video of the entire process of the soap making, like from, from the beginning to the very end packaging um, just love it so I thought I'm gonna do the same thing too, too and then everybody has the right to watch or not anyways so this is the finished product it's the bourbon and tobacco soap I hope you enjoyed so here you can see all the finished bars of the bourbon soap. I think they're pretty cute. They smell amazing and hope you liked it. So it's three days later and I just wanted to show you how the bourbon soap looks when it has been cured for about three days. It will get a little lighter and um, that's good. I like it. I love the look of it. It's rustic. 
and this is how the soap looks once it is packaged and labeled. <laughs>